forever off. Um, <laughs> what? Ooh. It's hard. It's hard to to know how many. I mean, Saints have to go for this, don't they? Because Warrington are hot on their heels, and they're not. Then they're, they're losing ground on Catalans every week. So I, I kind of feel they have to back up as much as they can from last week. I, I can't see um, them not playing a pretty full side, and I think they'll they'll slog out to a to a narrow win. I'll go Saints by eight. Okay, I'm going to go for the upset. I'm going to go for the cup hangover. Good. Uh, KR couldn't be more rested. St. Helens drained after Saturday's exploits. Um, KR by two. Why not? Fair enough. Okay, then the final Friday night game to talk about is Wigan versus Wakefield. Wakefield um, have some... I think the suspended players will be back, but they've got some other challenges for this game with a couple of uh, COVID situation. I think Westerman will still be out of action uh, in that regard. Wigan um, seem to be building back in. Hastings will be back, but that does, that just means we're going to ask why is Hastings playing fullback again. Uh, Young Halsall on the wing put in a performance that would make him worthy of, of a retained spot. He was pretty good under some really tough kicks with the much bigger senior whichever senior is still at Huddersfield, twin, jumping over the top of him and, and him is still staying strong in the face of that. So I think he might retain his place. Um, I think Wigan's confidence has grown and with Hastings back in, they'll be able to score a couple more tries. I think Wigan by 12. In the last couple of weeks, Wigan have been finding a way to beat teams that are statistically worse than them. So I don't see why that would change this week. Wigan by eight. Okay, then finally, Sunday at 5pm, unfortunately, unless something is sorted out between the uh, the butcher and the television companies in France. Uh, we won't get to watch this one, sadly. So let's, fingers crossed, something does get sorted out. But Saturday, 5pm, Catalans versus Castleford. Now, if St. Helens might have a Challenge Cup hangover, will Castleford have a Challenge Cup hangover? And will all those players who were magically fit again be struggling? <laughs> Yeah, we didn't talk about that, did we? Um, but yeah, it was a minor miracle. Lazarus-like, uh, all those players being fit again. Um, oh, Catalan by a million for me in this one. Castleford will be drained. I, I can't. Catalans have been sat at home, stayed stayed at home from from last round. Um, Catalan by eighteen. I suppose it's whether we think that when they were recovering any eggs that they had left in the one basket to try and find another basket were they all cracked at Cass because obviously now they have to think about trying to get into that top six they need to go on a winning run um, if they're going to do that I just don't see this being the start of it based on even though they've been sloppy at times in the last couple of weeks I think that'll just serve for a reminder and uh and I don't want to be picking against any side that's got Arthur Morgan here at the moment. So no. Catalans I mean, by 20. It's a, it's a tough trip for Castleford straight after a cup final. I mean, there's, there's no two ways about that. Yeah, with no fans there, and they normally do take a good group of, of well, a sizable group to um, to France, don't they, Castleford? They are one of the, you know, sides Best who's travels. trying to see that yeah. as their holiday kind of thing and uh, and and do that well. Yeah. Um, so that, that'll be a miss for them, I think, in, in that game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Women's Super League game of the week is Leeds versus St. Helens. One versus two. Unfortunately, it's Monday, 7.45pm. So, um, ordinarily, I can't even remember what, what where we're at with next week's show. I don't think... I think we'll be recording on the Monday night next week, so... Yeah, there's no Super League to tell us otherwise. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's the game of the week to pick out what do you think do you think do you think Saints are going to be wanting to get one over on Leeds here or like they did in the cup semi-final or do you think that Leeds' league form is 
is kind of superior at the moment and Saints are still kind of finding their way back after that cup final and COVID situation yeah uh, well the St. Helens team seemed happy enough on uh, Saturday to parade their trophy around at half time but um, I would say Leeds probably to win this one in a close one yeah I agree um, but everyone can watch that whilst we're recording next week Championship game of the week, Bradford versus Featherstone, third versus second. I tried yeah. to pick something that didn't involve Bradford and wasn't on that narrow pitch, but Sunday at 3pm, <laughs> it is. What do you reckon? Oh, third time we've played Featherstone this year. That doesn't seem fair somehow. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, the, the, our only hope is that they'll be um, still celebrating. Um or oh. get in and giving COVID because that's another opportunity, isn't it, with celebrations? Yes. Well, let, yeah. Come on, let, let, let's let's back the boys. Let's go for a narrow, narrow Bradford win. But I'd um, I'd be surprised if we even if we managed to do that. And in League One, the game of the week for us is Rochdale versus Workington Sunday at three pm. I think well, Rochdale might have a chance on the home patch um, against the Workington side that are in good form. Yeah, well, Rochdale have been up and down like uh, like most teams in in League One, but yeah, they'll uh, they'll, they'll they'll have a chance. NRL Brick Pits Eels versus Raiders Thursday at ten fifty, Roosters versus Knights Friday at nine am, Rabbitohs versus Warriors Saturday at six am, Panthers versus Broncos Saturday at ten thirty five am, and then Bulldogs versus Sharks. Sunday at 7.05am get your fan views into us on all of that action especially if you're going to one of those Super League games um, we want to hear from you the fans um, and uh, yeah we look forward to those next week now we're going to wrap up the show <laughs> SLP quiz time. Then the traditional start to the wrap up. This isn't out of order. This is this is back. This is in its normal place, Alan. Well, this... I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you if it's out of order depending on how, how hard it is. <laughs> I actually think this is one of the tougher ones I've written recently. Oh, if gee, I'm honest. Thanks, thanks mate. Um, but we've talked quite a bit about fathers and sons on this week's episode. Uh, you know, there was there was the good piece with Leon Price actually. Um, Read about it on the Love Rugby League web- website rather than listen to the podcast that's hosted by What's His Face. Who, uh, anyway? So, but Leon Price talked about how he's helping make sure his son learns from some of the things he didn't do right at the start of his career and setting himself up for other options and that sort of stuff. So, I, I, you know, I think it, it's it's good message there. We've had other things to talk about, fathers and sons, of course. James stepping in for his dad, David. Uh, <laughs> so, father and sons is the theme of the quiz okay now there were some really obscure ones I could have gone for I've tried to stay away from the super obscure but I've also avoided the super obvious but I've got three pairs of father and sons in rugby league for you to name for me so um, the first one one won the challenge cup as a head coach of Featherstone in 1983 the other won it as a head coach of Leeds in 2020 who is this father and son combo? Um, I don't know the father's name. Um, but I, I, I'm sure I'd call him Mr. Agar and, uh, and his son Richard. I'll give you half a point then. It's Alan Agar <laughs> Thank you. Is, All right, okay. is, is the famous Agar senior. Okay. This one's a bit of a mouthful, but I think it's a good clue. Go on. <laughs> this overseas father and son combo each reached two Challenge Cup finals and each has won the Challenge Cup once. Coincidentally, the one the father lost in the 80s was to the side that his son won his with, and the one the son lost in the 2010s was to the side that his father won his at. Who are they? Okay. <laughs> Do you want oh. me to read that one again? Bit to unpack. <laughs> um, um, no, uh, my instinct. I, 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 I don't even know if they are actually related. So if they're not, please, please forgive me. Is it the Lulu eyes? It is, yeah. 
Tommy and oh, what's the senior one called? Well, so I'm not going to get the scene. I, I, I only know him as Lee Lewis from from playing at uh, FC. I, I, I don't uh, I don't know his first name. I'm afraid. Yeah, J- James Lee Lewis yes. and his his yeah. son Tommy Lee Lewis. So James won it in '82 on a, on a replay with Hull FC. And then, coincidentally, actually, he played up against Sean O'Loughlin's dad, uh, I think, if I remember right. rightly from what, when I was researching this this afternoon in that one. Um, and Tommy Lulawai, who won his alongside Sean I O'Loughlin. genuinely had no idea he was his son. I in had no 2011, idea. And, uh, yeah. and then lost to Hull FC in 2017. Yeah. See, it was that... It was that... Yeah, I, I was, I was, I was thinking. Yeah, anyway, there you go. Lulu, I was the only name that came to mind, but I, I'm struggling on the father's names. Well, this go. one, it might be the son's name you struggle with on this one. All right, go on. This is the most difficult one. Earlier this year, it might not be the most difficult. Earlier this year, which pair of forwards of Chinese Maori descent? became the first father-son combo to both play for the Catalans Dragons in that club's 15-year history. <laughs> well, the father's Alex Chan, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, as we mentioned earlier in the show, being more erudite in his statements. Uh, but you were completely right. I do not know Chan Jr.'s <laughs> first name, so you're going to have to tell me that. It's Joe Chan. All right, okay. I could have guessed. Could have guessed Joe or something. Or Steve. There you go. Oh, Steve, do, do, do I get like... One you get half a half point points? for each, I think. Oh, okay. Thank half you. marks. Yeah. I've got surnames in each case. So that's, 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 that, I'm all right with that. I'm all right with that. I mean, there were some other options I could have gone with. Um, I was thinking of... Uh, I'm try- trying to find some of the really... The... <laughs> The really um, obscure one. So, you know, I could have gone with Steve Prescott, legend of the game. His dad also played for, for St. Helens in, in his playing career. Um, but I don't think you would have pulled Eric Prescott out of anywhere. Nope. Um, there's uh, quite a I mean, few you, along those sorts gone, of lines from the past. You could have gone, gone the, with, you know. Um, Sullivan's, that would have been an option. Sullivan's might have been easier, I thought, so... I yeah, that, that 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 was one of the, the yeah. more diff- yeah yeah fair enough yeah could have gone with um what's who's the the father of Sean O'Loughlin what was he called see I wouldn't have known that no Kieran just think some sort of Irish name <laughs> Isn't it? honestly I'll, I'll take my point I was trying to do I'll, a, a Kieran and Jonah tonight. Cunningham question but just nothing there's nothing interesting about Jonah Cunningham. <laughs> to to pull out of that um and you avoided the hanley obvious one i suppose as well yeah yeah you avoided the jason robinson tierney one yeah to be fair there's more than you think about you know, the more you go along there's 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 been more no there's and... there's loads you know brett and josh morris's dad was a you know pretty um famous player in his day sort of in his, in his yeah, career as well really. um yeah. Yeah, there's there's some out obscure ones as well. I didn't know Brian McLennan's dad was also a a news a, 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 a rugby coach, but apparently he coached St Helens at some point in his 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 life. Um, Mike McLennan. Uh, really? Yeah. There you go. The other good one would have been Tommy Martin, whose dad was Tommy Martin. That that was, <laughs> that was an option to go with. Um, but but I have, oh. I avoided that, uh, and I also um, avoided the Wayne Bennett, whose dad was also a coach. Uh, but I mean, that's four generations ago, isn't it? So, uh... God, that would that that would have been black and white coverage. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything else to tell our listeners about this week? Any recommendations? Anything of that sort? I do have a recommendation, and it's a bit of a food recommendation. Um, so I know I know not everybody's you know of the vegan persuasion, or even interested in it, or even considers it a, a dietary option. Um, but um, we got, or I say we, uh, I got seduced by an Instagram ad, as I know you have been in the past. Yes. Um, but I got seduced by a company called The Brook, 
ähm, also in B-R-O-O-K, okay. 